The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. For two decades, they defined tennis. Jimmy Connors of Belleville, Illinois, and John McEnroe of New York City. They've met 33 times in their illustrious careers. Twice they played in the finals at Wimbledon. In 1982, Connors won a dramatic five-set match to capture his second title. But in 1984, McEnroe punched and counterpunched his way to his third and final Wimbledon title. Now, ten years later, these two continue to demonstrate a passion to play, a competitive fire that ignited an entire generation of tennis fans and burns as hot today as it ever has. A return to the good old days. John McEnroe and Jimmy Connors meet in the finals of the challenge. Sports welcomes you to the challenge presented by Quality Inns. For decades, Pebble Beach, California has been the coliseum of golf achievement. Nicholas, Watson, and Kite won U.S. Opens here, but the area also features everything from antique car shows to dog shows. And it is here where Mother Nature decided to create her Mona Lisa. Every stroll on the beach or march down a fairway excites the senses. Stopping and smelling the flowers takes on a brand new meaning on the Monterey Peninsula. And this weekend, big time professional tennis returned to Pebble Beach, but not just any tennis. No, this brings together the two players who dominated the sport in this country for better than two decades. Jimmy Connors and John McEnroe, the championship of the challenge. Well, good afternoon and welcome, everybody, with Cliff Drysdale. I'm Brent Musburger, and there's an air of anticipation in the California air about this matchup. Well, it's understandable, isn't it, Brent? You know, so many people have come up to me over the years and have said we really miss in tennis the Jimmy Connors and the John McEnroe personality. I think that's being a little unfair, to tell you the truth, to a guy like Andre Agassi, who really has got a lot of charisma. And, of course, that great rivalry now between Andre Agassi and Pete Sampras. But it's a terrific matchup. It's a promoter's dream here this afternoon. Cliff, what about the, uh, the match? up of styles now between the two here well they've always played such interesting matches in fact Jimmy Connors plays interesting matches just about every time because he cannot blow anybody away now John McEnroe is a servant volley player and I've seen him blow away numerous players he's not going to be able to blow Jimmy Connors away so you're going to see Connors staying back playing aggressively and McEnroe coming to the net also playing aggressively now they did play once earlier this year in a final of the Champions Tour over in Moscow and McEnroe won that one rather handily 7-5-6-1 but of course this is an entirely different set of circumstances over here both of the men playing on clay that was never their best surface when they were younger clay. not for either one of them because neither one of them has won the French championships for example and Brent by the way when they played in Moscow it was on a court that really suited John McEnroe in as much as it was a carpet you know and he has always been a very good player on a surface that is relatively quick this one is not that way if you're asking me to predict I mean I've tried to think about who's going to win this match it's a very tough one because it's going to be very close compelling stuff either way you know what's so interesting is that yesterday Bjorn Borg was playing very well and again John McEnroe and we can still call him fiery he scorched the linesman's ears the match turned around he went on to win a three-setter and now both were supposed to be out here a little bit earlier and as we take a look right now they are making their way to the court and Cliff, you're saying basically we've got a Pick'em Championship on us. Yes, I think so. For one thing, yesterday's match I thought was terrific. I was surprised at how well Bjorn Borg was able to play. Uh, he showed me that he is really playing some terrific stuff, uh, considering that this is a clay court. Of course, you'd expect him to. Nevertheless, the players that I talked to after that match, Brent said that they had not seen him play that well in a couple of years. He lost anyway to McEnroe. You know, Cliff, uh, we have been around the senior golf, and we have seen the 
success. Arnold Palmer, I guess, started it. Then along came Jack Nicholas, Lee Trevino, and uh, something like that may be happening in tennis. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen on the backs of these guys. You have fellas like uh, Matt Svilander waiting in the wings. You've got a Yannick Noah, and you put them in the mix with these three genuine superstars of the sport, and you have got the potential for a very successful senior tour. The Pebble Beach Resorts would like to welcome you to the challenge presented by Quality Inns. The Each crowd for the greatest players in will the history of tennis competing for three. Watch the best of three sets. Today, Tiebreaker is featured here today. And this is the championship. In an earlier match, Bjorn Borg beat Guillermo Vilas. Now there's $150,000 at stake. McEnroe, 36 years old, very good physical condition. Still calling New York City his hometown. And already Jimmy starting to work alongside the crowd. There you can see McEnroe's seven Grand Slam championships. Uh, I just try to get an allowance, that's all. Here he goes. How are you today? And, of course, Jimmy has been one of the promoters of the Champions Tour, so he works the crowd pretty good. 42 years old. Belleville, Illinois is one of the places where he resides. And eight. Grand Slam championships for Jimmy. So coming up, it'll be the championship. John McEnroe and Jimmy Connors. One more time. Mark Quiet. Ready and action. Why am I still out there hustling? Because winning never gets old, and neither does saving money. If you're 50 or over, call 1-800-4-CHOICE, and you could save 30% at Quality Inns. Cut. Thank you. Again, please. What was wrong with that? It was long, Mr. Connors. <clears throat> Can we continue? Man, this guy should have been an umpire. <laughs> Why am I still out there hustling? Because winning never gets old, and neither does saving money. If you're 50 or over, call 1-800-4-CHOICE, and you could save 30% at Quality Inns. Cut! Last line again, please. Marker. Action. If you're 50 or over, call 1-800-4-CHOICE, and you could save 30% at Quality Inns. Again, please. Come on, are you kidding me? What it was wrong It was long, Mr. Connors. No way! Mr. Connors, if you please. What commercial are you watching? Why am I still out there hustling? Because winning never gets old. Cut. And it winning. Emphasize winning. Reset. Why am I still out there hustling? Because winning never gets old. And neither does saving money. If you're 50 or over, call 1-800-4-CHOICE. And you could save 30% at Quality Inns. The last line again, please. Action. Marker. If you're 50 or over, call 1-800-4-CHOICE. And you could save 30% at Quality Inns. Quality with a T. Okay, do you mind telling me what's going on here? Mr. Connors, if you don't mind. I'm out here trying to inspire people, and you're running me around. Mr. Connors, please step back. I said quality. Didn't I say quality? And action. Why am I still out there hustling? Because winning never gets old, and neither does saving money. If you're 50 or over, call 1-800-4-CHOICE, and you could save 30% at Quality Inns. Printed. Put them in a tall chair and they go nuts. The Challenge, presented by Quality Inns. Brought to you by Quality Inns Hotels, Suites and Resorts. The incredible I-30 from Infinity. More flagship styling, space and performance than you'd ever expect. John Nuveen and Company, quality tax-free investment since 1898. And the Discover Card. It pays to discover the card that pays you back. On a total... A very comfortable temperature for tennis today. More than Just a slight breeze, a little overcast in the air right now. And here's what the fellows are playing for here today in this championship. Two Wimbledons and five United States Opens. The first prize, of course, is $150,000. So there's a $50,000 difference already. Borg picked up $50,000 today. Also joining us, Pam Shriver. So let's go down to her now, Pam. 
including the Thanks, Brent. Well, you wonder why the delay. Well, a lot of times players have to make a last-minute pit stop, and that's what happened to John McEnroe just a little while ago. So a little bit of a delay, whether or not it's gamesmanship or not, who knows? But let me just say, these two are born to be competitors against one another. They have a long rivalry. They have the contrasting styles. A couple of interesting things. Yesterday, John McEnroe put in a two-hour and 15-minute effort to beat Bjorn Borg. Jimmy Connors had a little bit of practice, a little bit of golf, had his feet up watching. He played his semifinal match the day before. Connors is giving away six years, so that's a help. But that match yesterday of McEnroe's against Borg may be a little bit of an equalizer. McEnroe's going to get off to a better start than he did yesterday. Very slow against Bjorn yesterday. J John should want to try and win it in straight sets. I don't think he's going to be out here at like four all in the third as he was yesterday. I don't think he's played two such competitive matches in a row. But we'll see. It's going to be exciting stuff. Brent? Hey, Pam, wait a minute now. Yeah? You know, Cliff Drysdale said this is a pick em, so I'm going to leave it up to you. Who do you think <laughs> is going to win here this afternoon? If John has pulled up okay from yesterday's match, I think he'll win. But if he's a little bit tired, Jimmy will win it. Well, there we have it, Cliff, and that's really a pretty good analysis of this. Jimmy had an extra day off, uh, perhaps a lighter touch against Vilas. Uh, Mac was uh, forced to go three sets against Bjorn. Balanced by the six-year difference that you talked about as well. I remember when a certain guy by the name of Al Bunner started the seniors tennis years ago. Uh, eventually, Rod Laver and Ken Rosewall joined that troupe. It was called the Grand Champions at the time. He used to always say that seven years was the magic number. When you gave more than seven years away at an over 35 or 40 years of age, it was too much. Well, so they're just on the borderline of that. In truth, uh, Connors has kept himself in such great shape that I don't think that that seven-year story is going to be a factor today. He'll work with the crowd all match long. Our uh, chair umpire today, and uh, certainly a lot of experience in big events, worked at the U.S. Open for a decade, beginning back in 1979. Mr. Marvin Goldberg will be up on top, and uh, he had to settle Mac down more or was briefly yesterday. Jimmy Connors' last U.S. Open win was against Lendlin 83. Time. <laughs> Ready for play, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Connors to serve. Familiar used face. Uh, he used to have Dirty a Harry. celebrity tennis competition here at Pebble Beach for many years. Now they've expanded this beautiful facility. And he was, what, he mayor of this area? Carmel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you bet. Politician and actor. That cannot be said of John McEnroe. Actor, maybe politician, no. The last Grand Slam that McEnroe won was the 1984 U.S. Open final, and he beat Lendl there. So Lendl losing in a row to Connors and McEnroe in 83 and 84. Ready? Play. Now this is gamesmanship. Some things never change. Neither one of them will give the edge to the other. If one delays, the other one will. Thank you. 
from under him on the serve. And, uh, that can happen on this hard, true, fast, dry style. Take a look. See what happens. Looks like he slipped on the line. Terrific approach shot set it up, clipped the line. John McEnroe, Bjorn Borg, broke his service the first set yesterday. Now, Mac does the same to Connors here. Vitas Gerolitis reached the semi-finals or better in all four Grand Slams, winning the Australian Open in 1977. He won 27 titles overall and for seven years was ranked among the world's top ten. Last year, we lost Vitas. To remember his spirit, Michael Doherty, Vice President of Customer Marketing for Cheeseboro Ponds and Metadon, made the first donation in Vetus's name to fund a program for inner city children, giving them the opportunity to play tennis. McEnroe will be serving. One love here in the Mr. McEnroe first to side. You can see their lifetime record. What's so interesting about that, twice they met over in London in the final of Wimbledon, but never for a U.S. Open championship. <laughs> Pam, did you find out anything about uh, Jimmy Connors uh, possibly injuring himself when he went down? Well, when he slipped, it was 30-15, uh, and then it made it 30-all, and he's lost uh, three or four points in a row. And he came down pretty hard on his left knee, drew a little bit of blood on the changeover. He was cleaning it off. And also his left wrist, he was flexing it a bit. So uh, it, a fall like that early can be a little off-putting. Now, Cliff, it was interesting that uh, Mac went on the attack right away, just as soon as he could. Well, that's what you'd expect from him. By the way, uh, Connors' wrist was operated on, if you remember. Help! It was an operation uh, in, uh, that he figured might destroy his career. I'd probably guess he probably isn't. But he went through it, and then the same doctor that operated on him operated on Andre Agassi. Both successful. He brought some heat on that one. That left-handed serve out wide is a great... 
Again, McEnroe trying to go into the right-handed uh, forehand, of course, Jimmy Connors, it's into his backhand side. Forehand sails on him some. He's got a continental grip on the forehand. He's really the last great player to have that grip on the forehand side. And then along came Borg and everybody was copying his style. Brent, you said a moment ago that uh, they had never played the championship match at the U.S. Open. Of course, you did write about that. They played three times in the semifinals at the Open. Exactly. See, he can swing it in either side. This is the wide serve. Connors looks for it. McEnroe with those outstanding hands of his, not able to get to that one. The return about as perfect as it could be at McEnroe's feet. Mixes up the serve direction better than any left-hander ever. Breaks right back. One thing about Connor is he always had that competitive yeah, edge, well. and I ask him if it will be hard to get the juices flowing here today. Well, you have no trouble getting my competitive juices at, going at any time. And just when I play a McEnroe or a Borg or a Vilas and all the guys that I grew up playing such great matches with, to still be able to go out and play them at this point in our lives and our careers and at this level, if that doesn't get my, my juices flowing and, and uh, the fire's burning, then something's wrong with me. So, you know, my game is uh, where I would like it. I'm playing very good tennis. I'm in very good shape, which is important for me. But for me to go out and play McEnroe at, at any time, if I can't get ready for that, then it's time for me to go into the other game. Connors talks like that. It was only a few years ago that he played so well and electrified New York. In fact, the whole country at the U.S. Open wins over Pat McEnroe, Aaron Crickstein in five sets.
Cliff Jimmy has been very successful when he's reached the net of this match so far. Well, he chooses his time to get in, and at this point, I'm surprised that McEnroe hasn't made an effort to get into the net sooner than he has so far. We'll see. Stay back with uh, Connors, and you could be coming in second. Exactly where the cameras are. He also knows where the microphones are. So, since he didn't get a chance to win the point, he figured he might as well have a little fun with the camera. been able to hold service yet. Cliff, I look around, we've got a standing room only crowd here. But then the entrance ways are packed in, standing up on top. We've got another few thousand in here watching that replay there. Connors has got timeless strokes, you know. He, his textbook stuff, he uses his shoulders so well. His mechanics are perfect, and that's why he has enjoyed such longevity. here. Back and roll leading it in the first set. In the background, Carmel Bay, and uh, right there is the seventh green. What a wonderful little par three. Tom Kite, of course, pitched in there, birdied the hole, and then began his march a few years back to his U.S. Open championships. There's the beach club. And here we are at the tennis center now with John McEnroe serving up 2-1 here in the first set.
said that Connors and Mackin are nine of the last 20 titles. They dominated the 70s and 80s. Nine of 20 at the US Open. Connors first won it in 74, won it again in 83. Again, Connor's Good choosing the right time to get in here. McEnroe with a slice, and that gives him the signal to get in. And a terrific two-handed volley. He controls that very well. The minus on the two-handed volley is that you, you need the reach. But the plus is you have very good racket head control and you saw it on that last point. McEnroe's in excellent physical condition. He told me they didn't weigh any more than uh, when he was dominating, but he broke down a little bit on the harder surfaces. Brent, he works out, you know, he makes a big deal of the fact that he doesn't play a lot. But uh, the truth is that he and uh, Connors play a lot of exhibition matches and he gets in shape for events like this. Look at McEnroe here again, these hands of his that are so magical. Not that much shoulder turn on the shot, but his racket head control is just incomparable. Beautiful, super. Brent, when I say they play a lot, they played some exhibition matches, not the same as this 43. on national television. The last time they played in an official event was in 91 in Baal, Switzerland. McEnroe won that one easily. That was after Connors had made that superb run at the Open. <laughs> Talk about Agassiz's return to serve. Jimmy Connors, it's the best part of his game too. Look, look how he has to move wide to get to it and still able to control it down the line. Another great return of service. And advantage Connors. what he had to do to beat Jimmy here today. Well, yesterday, I think if people saw the match with Bjorn, they saw a lot of topspin. And uh, what I tried to do there was bring him into net because he's weaker at net. When Jimmy hits the ball flat, hits the ball with a lot of pace. So I'm going to try to put a little more topspin on my shots to make sure he doesn't see this, OK? But obviously, as well, getting a high percentage of first serves, attack at the right moment, try to keep Jimmy off balance because we both slip and slide a little bit out there on the clay courts. Pretty good analysis of what we've seen so far, too. Oh. 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 Yeah, 
shots just got by him. Too strong. Fifteen all. Not that much margin for error in Connors' shots. I'm talking about the way that he can, uh, you know, his execution of the shot is really timeless. But there's not a lot of margin for error, so he'll clip a lot of tapes. Clip a lot of lines, too. to believe that McEnroe was going to go down the line here on this running forehand, but the last minute he flicks it cross court. Con uh, McEnroe did that so well for his entire career and still does. The running forehand that you expect to go down the line, he can, he can hit cross court just as easily. Very tough to anticipate. Take a look at this. It's brilliant. The drop shot that draws Connors into the net. Now, Connors stays there looking for the passing shot. Delicate lob over Connors' head. No chance. And our favorite words of the day, break point. from Connors now here it is again here's the there's the one that Connors is complaining about or McEnroe rather gonna play it again an overrule in the first set. McEnroe over Connors 3-2. Back with more after this from our ABC stations. No lovelier sight than that of the Pebble Beach Resort. Home, of course, in the winter of the Pebble Beach. AT&T National Pro-Am. If you look down from above now at that treacherous par three. Some days a wedge, and if the wind is up, Fellas hitting three irons out there. Right now, no one can hold their serve here, Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> the, the serve stats are terrible at the moment, but uh, testimony to the return of serve. 44% first serves for Connors McEnroe, 50%. But even when they get their first serves in, they're not winning the points. That piece of shit, boy. 
You know, great competitors never change. They never lose that edge, no matter what they're involved in. These two fellows, as much as anything, want to beat each other here. Today. There's a lot of ego at play in this match. intimidated you were just saying a minute ago friend about the egos involved here they have a great deal of mutual respect as well these two you see him hustle to get it but the drop volley was too good misses this kind of drama and length of point too. Again, watch the return of Jimmy Connors and he gets in here and tries for the cross court, but uh, it goes wide. But I mean, it is interesting for me. It's been an eye opener because these players are playing brilliant tennis and the points last so much longer. This one here that uh, obviously clipped the line. So we're going to, for the second time, have an overall. I don't think John McEnroe will ever need glasses. Actually, that wasn't an overall. Uh, technically speaking, the line's person has changed his mind. Low percentages. And they've paid the price. Thirty all. In case you just joined us, we're five games into the first set. Neither Connors nor McEnroe has been able to hold service yet. McEnroe is serving up three two. chance for McEnroe to open a little daylight here in the first set. Now, over in the first set. 
right now, let's go to Pam Shriver with a familiar face. Pam? Yes, thanks, Brent. I'm with Clint Eastwood. And, uh, Clint, a couple questions about McEnroe. Through the years when he had all those arguments, did you ever think he was maybe acting a little bit? Well, I don't know. If he was, he was doing a good job with it. But uh, sometimes uh, different players have different ideas about how to keep the adrenaline going. And uh, he, uh, I think that was just one of his techniques to kind of keep himself up for the game. Well, sometimes people thought he was acting pretty badly, but uh, I understand you haven't been playing too much tennis, but watching these guys start to make you want to get back out there. That makes me want to get back into the game, yeah. 15, yeah, I think uh, I really enjoy starting playing again. Yeah. Now, I understand a couple of weeks, Bridges of Madison County, everyone can uh, see it at their nearby theater. June 2nd. June 2nd will be in the nearby theater. Okay, great. Thanks, Clint. Friend? The bill is on the way. <laughs> Take them all. Put them all down there. <laughs> this kind of tennis takes a lot out of you. Unlike the big serving of Pete Sampras, the points are so short. <laughs> Come back, we'll be serving at 4 3 in the first set. Now, ABC Sports presents another winning never gets old tennis tip brought to you by Quality Inns. I've never played a tennis match in my life that nerves haven't entered into the situation some way or another. Young or old, it doesn't matter. Nobody's immune from that. So you have to stay loose, you have to stay on the balls of your feet so that you can move freely. And by that, I mean you can get your racket back early so that you can catch the ball out in front of you and make sure you concentrate on watching the ball so that your timing can be perfect. You want to relax and concentrate. Go for your shots. Don't play defensive tennis. This is when you produce the kind of tennis that's necessary for you to come through in the clutch. And when all is said and done, go back to the basics and enjoy yourself. This is why we're here. This winning never gets old tennis tip has been brought to you by Quality Inns. We are back. This is the championship ready, match ready, of the ready, challenge. Ready. Jimmy Connors and John McEnroe. Connors defeated Guillermo Vilas in straight sets. McEnroe was forced to go a third set against Bjorn Borg yesterday. And now here they are in the final. McEnroe serving the first set of fourth row. Again, he has come into the net twice as many times as McEnroe, and that is not something that you'd have expected. <laughs> McEnroe 
trying to gain some consistency with his first serve. Server's out. That's what he was hoping. Here's another look at it. Yeah, clipped a line. Look at how Connor's got to that one there. McEnroe tries for the drop shot, but if you don't hit it well, you're in trouble. And McEnroe, as soon as he hit that one, Connor was going to get to it and watch Jimmy here make this last minute effort at the cross court winner. He <laughs> put so much pressure on the serving team. So again, a couple more break points. It's been the inability to hold service that has defined the first set of this match so far. set and the frustrations continue to mount and a reminder that tonight on ABC Bob Saget gives away $100,000 to the top video on America's Funniest Home Videos then the season finale of Lois and Clark this is an episode you can't miss then Wesley Snipes stars in the network premiere of Passenger 57 all tonight right here on ABC can't anybody hold on to service over a length of time here Cliff Connor's making his way to the net again. Well, Brent, uh, Magnum got broken again, but it wasn't that he played a bad serve game. It was brilliant returning from Connor's. That has been a trademark of his, as just about everybody who's watched tennis over the years knows. So it's not so much poor serving as brilliant returning from both. Again, McEnroe can be serving for the first set.
1530. Flat shots here of Connors, as you can see, goes through the ball so well, but the, versus the hands of McEnroe. That is Connors' fifth forehand error. Here's another look. You know, said he, you know, he has so little margin for error. Here he comes. Clips the tape and it goes back on his side. Balanced by the fact that when and if they go over, they are so tough to get back. so compelling for me is that there's a decision to be made every time they start to swing at the ball tactical decision and a mechanical decision because neither one of them has got the the power to put the ball away against each other it's, this is like glaring in my ear where do I put that down I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't bounce the ball it's like super loud in my ear can we turn it down, please? Can I say it a little more? No, that's not my say. They don't hear me. <laughs> 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 the stadium speaker system he's talking about. without a villain, would it? Back and roll again, unhappy. The linesman, though, with a much better angle. Now John's going to ask for indication of the mark here on the clay. Confirming the outcourt. Big point. <laughs> Worth an argument, but he lost it. So you thought he'd mellowed. Consistent you are. Consistently wrong is incredible. Hey, Canola people, eh? Juices are bubbling again. So 
Now John McEnroe finds himself trailing for the first time. Now this is on videotape and he went over to the line judge and was berating him over there just like McEnroe in the old days. So nothing has changed with John and then the PA announcer passes on the information that his beloved Knicks are down. This is not a happy John McEnroe about ready to serve. Connors, on the other hand, is not going to be distracted from what's going on out here. He never has been. Take a look at this movement from him. It uh, turns out to be an easy forehand because it gets up high. The drop volley was too, uh, was hit too hard. Easy put away, love 15. Now, Jimmy, calling the judge there. Gotta get out of the way. His back's up against it. At the end of the court, there's nothing you can do about it. And Jimmy knows it. Oh, yes. This is just terrific stuff. Every point tells its own story. Here's the approach. Uh, you can see Connors has, you know, he's come in more than McEnroe so far. This is a good approach shot, too. Pretty deep. But you can see he started to make his move to cover down the line, and Mac went cross court. First double. <laughs> Turn was good, so Mac didn't want that to be called on the line on the serve. <laughs> at how these boys, both of them, are able to control the ball. Well, Saturday on ABC Sports, Hall of Famer Nancy Lopez, defending champion Patty Sheehan, and tour favorites Laura Davies and Dottie Mockery hit the links as we begin coverage of the J.C. Penney LPGA Skins game, Saturday at 3.30, 2.30 Central, right here on ABC. We have had 
more service breaks than holds in this match. Well, if your complaint about modern tennis is serve and volley and out the door, then you've come to the right place. This is an entirely different brand of tennis here this afternoon. And a lot of talk about it changing things uh, enable the ATP Tour to get a little bit more of this kind of brand of tennis. One hour old and then some. We've still only had five games all in the first set. Connor said he likes the way it is. Don't change anything. <laughs> Mackin, on the other hand, would like to see some changes. Slow things down a bit. Have the boys play points that are more compelling on their tour. See what happened here with him. He just mistimed the overhead. He was moving backwards. He didn't steady himself before hitting the overhead. But he's ahead in the game. have one double fault. Drysdale and Pam Shriver. I'm Brad Musburger. This is the championship of the challenge. First set, best of three. Jimmy Connors leading six games to five. We played a little over an hour here in the first set, and I would say, with tennis like this, Cliff, bring along a lunch. You yeah. may be staying a while. Yeah, everybody enjoyed what happened yesterday in the semifinals. McEnroe beating Borg barely. Oh. And they are going to enjoy this one in equal measure because it has been terrific stuff so far. Connor's now with a chance if he can break John again. Oh. He's off to a strong start. McEnroe still struggling. He just has not been consistent with his uh, first serve like he was for a time against Borg yesterday. He's not at 50% on first serves. And as you pointed out, he was way up there at 60% yesterday. Oh, 
when you are uh, serving against somebody like Connors who puts so much pressure on the return, it affects your your first serve effectiveness sometimes. He lets this one go and it goes long. That was a great serve. You know, with Ball, you know that he's not going to hurt you on the return. With Connors, he really can. It's McEnroe's second serve. Let it slip through. Two handed from Connors. That's his favorite side. He has uh, some better control on it. He hits both of them very flat. I always say that the way to get to Connors is low to the forehand. That's a great return. John did not expect. Jimmy to get that one back in play and he hesitated it froze him for just a fraction of a second. And the serve wide to Connors and he's able to get to it and you can see him having to backtrack and he actually got to the ball but uh, missed it. They are moving each other around. It takes so much out of you to play from the baseline. And remember, as flat as Connors hits the ball, you really have it's not like you again playing against Borg with the topspin where you've got a little extra time. You have no time. Tiebreaker in the first set. It's first ace. First to seven points, two point lead wins the tiebreaker. that he has to make. Connors comes in two-handed backhand that he figures is a winner One, truthfully zero, only in two. Connors. Turned out that it was but McEnroe got to it and so nearly made the, made the shot just missed the line. He has his reaction. Whoa. Now bring it. Ball toss when he said low again. 
Both know at this stage of the match that aggressive play is going to win it. They're both playing well. Neither is giving an inch. It's the defensive tennis you can forget. looks so easy but trust me it is a very difficult shot to hit this is the inside out forehand he sees Connors is back there and so he goes for the drop shot but he nevertheless had to play it perfectly for the winner improvisation from McEnough. one we'd be talking about. <laughs> Sound system is so good the court you can pick up cellular phones in the crowd. deep as they can the return was too shallow now Connors jumps all over the volley compelling stuff decided against a major argument that call, he'll serve a second serve. It's going to be an argument on that one on the other side, isn't it? 
to have this mark check. I thought I heard it clip the line back there. I thought the previous shot by Jimmy was out, but maybe that's just my angle. I'm quite a ways away right here. Here's the one that they are arguing about now. Look good from there, but again, it's a distorted angle. For the one. Well, it looked like it skidded too, which is another sign that it probably clipped the line. Once a year, they have a splendid antique car show. Aren't those beauties? Yesterday, they had a great dog show over there behind the 18th green. Chance to see some Quiet, wonderful animals over there. Thank you. If you were a golfer coming up 18, you hear that shepherd barking. I love that distracting here. We've had some very compelling tennis here in the first set. Went to the tiebreaker. Connors winning it. And now it starts off really the definitive way that the first set was wrapped up because there were the 12 games, excluding the tiebreaker now, there were six service breaks in that first set. So here we are, second set now. Five of them in the first five games. Starvers with Bjorn Borg. Pam? Thanks, Brent. Bjorn, yesterday you had a long match with John McEnroe, two hours and 15 minutes. John lost the first set just now in an hour and 20. Does he have what it takes to try and dig this thing out in three? Well, uh, I'm sure he's a little bit stiff today. But, uh, he's, he's looking pretty good, though, but it's just a matter of uh, mentally. If it's uh, that tough to, to stay in the match, though, it's, I think the, the key thing is the first couple of games here in the second set, though. Are you really enjoying watching these two guys play. Did you ever watch them a lot when you all were mixing it up in the top about 10 or 15 years ago? I actually never did, though. I mean, this is, I enjoy, I uh, actually enjoy watching these guys. You know, during the prime time when we played, we played so many times against each other, so. And I, you know, so we knew each other's game pretty well. And uh, I've not seen these guys play for, for so many years. So, and especially when it comes to, you know, this kind of match, this is always uh, it's nice to watch them. Now, if all three of you are at your absolute peak, which one of the two of them would you least like to play for all the marbles? <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe McEnroe, I think so, maybe John. Yes. Maybe it depends on the surface. Depends on the surface, but yeah, definitely, yeah. I mean, clay is, is 
probably my best surface if we compare three of us. Though. But uh, you know, on the on the goes the fast surface. You know, John is very generous with his serve. It depends on his serve, you know. But for instance, today, I don't think John is serving as well as as he did yesterday. Okay, thanks, Bjorn Brent. All right, Pam, and I think that she may have figured the key thing here. John McEnroe had to go a tough three sets yesterday, and it is starting to show. There is part of the new and expanded beach and tennis club here at Pebble Beach. And a friend of ours, Cliff, is the director of tennis here, Mike Trabert. He's the son of the fellow that I worked the first tennis broadcast with. Tony Trager is over the Italian Open today. And now Jimmy Connors of the game has a service here in the second set against Mac. Italian Open, by the way, won by Thomas Muster. There in the background, the famed R3 seventh hole. Had a little rain delay over there, didn't they, Cliff? Apparently. Uh, he'd be preparing oh. for. Very low. Questionable tactic there from McEnroe. He wasn't but about eight feet from the serve line when he hit that backhand on the return. It's not a high percentage play at the best of times. Connors has got the break, and Borg is exactly right. These uh, first couple of games here are going to tell just how much Borg, or I should say McEnroe, is in the match. A little lift, psychological lift. And when he gets his teeth into you, the bulldog is just not going to let go. It'd be great if Yvonne Lindell hit that back heel and, uh, and join these fellows. Cliff, I think he'd give him a lift and uh, a little added force out here. Huh? I think he will. Qualifies age wise now. Mats Bielander will qualify soon age wise as well. Cliff, we should uh, point out the ages of 35. You know what else they need? They need somebody who has not been in the limelight, like a Larry Loretti, to come on. <laughs> and <win one> <laughs> there are a lot of them waiting, I'll tell you that. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Game Connors, two love. Now, Connors up to love here in the second set. A reminder now, next Sunday, big one coming up on ABC. We're going to head to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Without a question, it's the greatest spectacle in auto racing, the Indianapolis 500. Coverage begins at 11 Eastern time, live next Sunday, right here on ABC. You have just done more for participation in tennis than you know because there are people all over this country saying, give me my racket. I want to get out there in case I get a shot at these boys. <laughs> That's his second ace only. Take a look at some of his statistics there on the serve. One of the things that, uh, Cliff, I want to pass on to everybody is uh, how all four of the fellas, Vilas, Borg, McEnroe, Connors, they showed up with the sponsors, had their parties, shook a lot of hands this week, signed autographs. It's the same kind of thing we saw when the senior golf exploded here in this country. Uh, really means a lot. Tennis players, by reputation and in actual fact, are not that easy to get to if you're a press person or indeed a sponsor, although even the ATP Tour has started to have them realize that they've got to get into things. Guillermo Vilas. There's Guillermo Vilas, now a bit of a rock musician. In fact, uh, he 
has a performance coming up in Paris here in a few weeks. Heads up, everybody. Two games to love. First set to Connors and a tie break. 30 all at this stage. If McEnroe is going to lose a second serve here, two breaks down, that would be all she wrote. serving. Well, one of the beauties of Pebble Beach, it's a public golf course and you can go out there and walk with the ghosts of Nicholas and Palmer and Watson and Kite and look at the famed 17th. That's where the great shots were struck in the U.S. Open competition here. It's Connors, McEnroe and Jimmy serving. And won the first set, the tie break. And he's up 2-1, serving to John here in the second. Connors has really played beautifully on the Champions Tour. He's only lost twice, once to Clerk, and you can see why. He's playing very confidently. And the only other time that he lost was to McEnroe in Moscow a couple of weekends ago. 7-5-6 won that score. That was on a court that's a lot kinder to McEnroe, an indoor, faster surface. Second double fault for Connors. Shot, balanced by an even better passing shot. McEnroe 
die was cast when he came in behind that, but you've got to figure when you're able to get that, uh, that slice on the approach like you'll see here, that you've pretty much got the point one, but see what Connors does. Gets to it. Now look McEnroe, he keeps going to his left. Connors goes down the line for the clean winner. Pretty to watch. Oh, that in two weeks ABC Sports travels to Ohio for one of the most prestigious stops on the PGA Tour. Join Jack Nicklaus as he hosts an all-star international field of golf's best. It's the Memorial Tournament sponsored by Dean Witter. Coverage begins Saturday, June 3rd, right here on ABC. Well, Jack Nicklaus, he won his U.S. Open here. hit a memorable one iron down there into the wind. Jack Nicklaus also a avid tennis player. He's got two or three grass courts at his home in Florida. of tennis John McEnroe he can let the racket head drop and still get to the volleys just take a look at this just watch this see how, how the racket head is dropping there, the racket head that ball was so high he didn't have to but the most delicate and best hands in the history of the game <laughs> Just take a look at how well he plays the shot. I remember playing him at Wimbledon one year when he did this to me unmercifully. And I said, why don't they talk about that shot more often? Over McEnroe's head, total disguise. It's a game. Connors up in the second set, three games to two.
Cliff Drysdale and Pam Shriver. I'm Brad Musburger. This is the championship of the challenge. Jimmy Connors and John McEnroe. We want to remind our stations along the line, especially those expecting the early feed of World News Sunday. We're going to stay on the air here for a time and see how this one continues at the top of the hour. The first set was won by Jimmy Connors. He did it an hour and 20 minutes, required a tiebreaker. And here in the second set, Connor is leading 3 2 with the serve. Let's go to Pam Striver. Pam? Well, Brian, I keep looking at John McElroy. He's definitely the tired one out here. He's been out here for over four hours, combination of yesterday's match and today. He's got to find a way to shorten up some of the points, gamble a bit more, maybe attack some second serves at Jimmy Connors. Also, he's got to come in up the middle sometimes, quit giving Jimmy Connors the angles and just attack hard up the center. Brent? Thank you, Pam. The exit got out of the point and won it. Take a look. Just watch this now. Here, watch the shoulder rotation here, and then he keeps his eye on the ball. He keeps the racket head firm, and then he follows through on the line of the shot. Great mechanics. He does the same thing off the forehand side. That's why at 42 years old, he's still out there. You can see it again right there. Look at the follow through again. side in a suicide contest. Beat him the only way to do it really, other than to attack him and blow him away, which is very tough to do, is to try to break down the forehand. players who do not give ground Brent guys like Agassi uh, Jim Courier off the ground you know they don't like to get too far behind the baseline Jimmy Connors was that kind of player two decades ago and he still plays that way World News Sunday and your local news will still be coming up here on ABC. We are in the second set. That's two out of three. Jimmy Connors won the first against John McEnroe and now leads the second 4-2. Tennis here the last three days McEnroe and Connors 
Connors beating Velas. McEnroe over Borg in three sets yesterday. Four aces for McEnroe. It's not a lot. And it's testimony to how well Connors has uh, returned serve. Got to just about everything. Two bullets. Semi-final, straight set win for Connors oh. yesterday. Some outstanding tennis played by both McEnroe and Borg, and perhaps the three-setter has taken a little bit of a toll on John. This is his best stretch of serving until the last one that we've seen from him. Oh. Second set, four games to three. We'll return with more from Pebble Beach, California after this from our ABC stations. So many of you have had the opportunity to take the 17-mile drive and see the wonderful marine life out here. Cliff, I've always wondered what happened to the abalone, and then I, I watched those otters out there. I know those suckers turn around today. They were breaking open one shell after another out there this morning, Carter. Hey, I understand those seals can be kind of ornery. You don't want to mess with those. <laughs> Perfect to watch, though. Oh, in the aquarium, and Monterey is always a light, too. McEnroe realizes that this is a last gasp for him. And he has a chance at love 15. Coming up next, the ABC World News Sunday at your local news on these ABC stations. We're in the second set of this, the championship of the challenge between Jimmy Connors and John McEnroe, the two who dominated tennis in this country in the 70s and the 80s. First time they played, 1977 at Wimbledon. Connors won uh, that match in a semi-final. That's when John McEnroe made his first. Uh, that was his first Wimbledon. Four setter. Big point. 15-30. Connors keeps the pressure on. Oh! 
on. 40, 30. Again on this baseline, take a look at this. He looks at it, he's looking at the mark, and he's looking at the lines person. <laughs> and she got up and confirmed her original call. Connors with the serve at 40 30 now. Up 4 3 here in the second set. the second service. That's a great <laughs> Nobody can do this yes. better. Just take a look at McEnroe here and watch as he makes contact with the ball, ball on the racket. Just take a look and see how he just softens the wrist at that point. Nobody does it better. Championship tennis here. Jimmy Connors and John McEnroe. Take a look at this. See, here's the approach, but it lands a little short. That gives McEnroe the chance to get a good look at the pass. And that's his reaction. <laughs> So we want to alert our stations along the way that uh, since tennis is going to run long, we are going to give you an additional station break now, and we will do that at the next opportunity. So a station break coming up along the line here on ABC because we're running long with our tennis. Forehand, and uh, he has played so crisply in this match so far. And that's only his second double fault in the match. Two hours old now, and only two double faults. That's just good returning a serve. Had it 
affability, even though he didn't know it was going there until the last minute to make the adjustment and get back there quickly enough to put it away. to go. Connors doesn't have the top spin there to, to fall back on. That's why that low forehand's a tough shot for him to get it over the net and then bury it the other side. Pebble Beach, California, after this from our ABC station. This. Well, let's go quickly to Jack Whitaker, who has really been enjoying this tennis. Jack? It's been a magnificent tennis weekend here on the Monterey Peninsula. These four players, all over 35 years of age, have shown us the real glory of the game. We've had scintillating rallies. We've had drop shots, half volleys, improbable gets, magnificent winning shots, everything you want to see. The whole inventory of this game laid out by these four masters. And it's not been a turn-back-the-clock exercise. It's been more like going in a time machine. Reminiscing isn't for these players. Not yet. The competitive fires are still burning. This was another opportunity to win again, to keep father time at deuce, because these players know better than anyone else that winning never gets old. Brent? Indeed. Thank you, Jack. And now for Jimmy Connors, he will try to do just that. A chance here to win. He'll serve for the match against John McEnroe. Just traded breaks of serve, so the pressure is on the server at the moment. Connors' his reaction to hitting that forehand long, love 15. He had six breaks of serve back in the first set. Take another look. Now watch McEnroe. He comes in here. See if he can anticipate this at all. Anything in his body language? No. Not until after it is too late. Jimmy 
really brought that serve this time to set this all up. And now, he'll go for the victory. One more time, Jimmy. He's changing rackets at this critical moment. He must have broken a string. Another great serve, and Jimmy Connors beats John McEnroe in straight sets. Seven, six, six, four. And just as they did in the past, Connors and McEnroe delighting the tennis fans here today. It was a tremendous effort, Brent, from both players. It really was. Neither one of them giving ground. The ABC crucial point, tie-break in the first set. ABC World News Sunday and local news still coming up on these ABC stations. Jimmy Connors has done it. Took a tiebreaker in the first set, 7-6. Then he came back. He broke the first game of the second set and rolled to his victory. Jimmy Connors is the winner, 7664. The first challenge, judging from the reaction and the way the players perform, this will be the first of many as Jimmy Connors has captured the challenge over John McEnroe.